My name is James Fleshman. I'm a colorectal surgeon here in St. Louis at Washington University. I'm a professor of surgery. I'm the chief of colorectal surgery at Washington University in Barnes Hospital. Minimally invasive surgery is obviously still invasive, but it's less invasive. And so the whole area of surgery that has developed around that has been based on the fact that we can do the same big operation on the inside of the body through small access incisions on the outside of the body. So taking a colon out through a five centimeter incision or two inches is what we're trying to do as opposed to making a 25 centimeter incision which is a foot long incision on your, on your abdomen. First uh, minimally invasive surgery in colorectal surgery was performed in 1991. We have reports of the first colectomy, the removal of the colon from the abdomen for cancer in 1991 and 92. Since then, it has expanded to do all kinds of operations in the abdomen and especially with the colon. We can now take out the entire colon, including the rectum, make a new rectum out of small intestine and hook it to the anal canal, all through a laparoscopic, minimally invasive approach. Most major institutions who are now doing colorectal surgery are also doing laparoscopic or minimally invasive colorectal surgery. So minimally invasive surgery has two benefits. One is immediate. So in the recovery room, the patient wakes up with less pain because of a smaller incision, shorter incision, and uh, can do things like take deep breaths a little easier. They can get out of bed a lot faster and, and walk. They have less of a problem with slow recovery of bowel function. Uh, they require less pain medicine. And they actually tend to do much better uh, in the hospital. So we can feed people right away. Uh, we can give them something to drink and advance their diet and they can leave within three to five days after a major colectomy, even though it was um, the same size of, a, of an operation as it would have been open, all the difference is, is the size of the incision on the abdominal wall. So in the operating room and afterwards, they do better. And then when they go home, it's usually about two weeks of recovery at home as opposed to the six to eight weeks of recovery at home that used to be with an open operation. So those are the short-term benefits. We've shown no improvement in cancer treatment with laparoscopic operations. We've shown no change in the uh, long-term survival based on uh, laparoscopy versus open. What we have noticed is that people who have a laparoscopic operation form fewer adhesions or less scar tissue. And so that we may over time start seeing less of a problem with small bowel obstruction due to adhesions. And we may also start seeing a lower incidence of hernia formation uh, in patients who have had laparoscopic operations. The determination of whether or not a patient is a candidate for a minimally invasive surgery depends on several things. Number one is the skill of the surgeon. Number two is the disease process, and number three is the body habitus of the patient. Patients who have severe inflammatory bowel disease or severe diverticulitis may or may not be able to be treated with laparoscopic uh, techniques. A patient who is morbidly obese, I'm talking a BMI of greater than 40, has a less of a likelihood to be able to be treated with a minimally invasive approach. Most insurance companies have some form of coverage for laparoscopy. There are still some procedures that are uh, on the cutting edge that haven't gone through the coding process. There are ways of being reimbursed and if nothing else, they're just charged the same price and the same uh, reimbursement as an open operation. So uh, it really shouldn't be the patient's job to worry about those things. That's up to the surgeon and his billing office and the patient simply says this is the approach that I prefer and the surgeon should provide it. The number one reason for surviving colorectal cancer is early detection. 
So the thing that people need to know about colorectal cancer is, is that if you've had it, or if you have family members who have had it, then you need to be followed very closely to detect the colon cancer at an early stage. Once you have had your first screening colonoscopy, it doesn't mean you're finished and you don't have to go back. This is an ongoing thing that you need to really stay with. Once they remove, anyone removes a polyp or a cancer from your body, your body has told you that you have a high risk of having another one for the future. The thing that will save your life, if the surgeon did his job or her job and your colon cancer was cured, you still have to make sure that the rest of your colon doesn't develop another problem. So that's what I would tell people. Screening and surveillance saves lives.